So for this video, we're going to be talking about the bony and soft tissue that exists in and around the little humeral joint. So let's go ahead and dive in. As we look at the anterior portion of the shoulder, we can see a couple joints right away. First, we have the only axial attachment of the glenohumeral joint to the rest of our skeleton, right? And that is through the SC and the AC, being the sternoclavicular and the acromioclavicular joint. So initially, when we begin our palpation, we can start more midline with the sternoclavicular joint and make sure that there are no kind of uh, protuberances or anomalies. And then we can trace the clavicle all the way anterolateral to our AC joint. Now it's not uncommon to see a little bit of a bump or a step off there. Uh, the AC joint is prone to either a sprain or even a slightly a subluxation. Uh, and so you can see just a slight kind of bony appearance there, but otherwise normal. And we could ask if there's any symptom reproduction or complaints. Once we find our AC joint, we can drop directly off of uh, that onto our chromium, which is coming off of our scapula, and then just kind of inferior, uh, inferior and anterior to that, we can begin to palpate uh, the anterior portion of the humoral head, where we find our greater and lesser tubercle, and our bicipital groove, which is where the long head of the biceps would lie. Additionally, we can move more into a posterior portion and here we would find the spine of the scapula. We're going to actually have our uh, patient uh, swing around uh, to the opposite side of the table so we can see this for just a moment. All right. So uh, we would find our spine of the scapula here, and that really separates our infraspinous fossa from our supraspinous fossa. Spine of the scapula comes along to the medial border. We can see the medial border here, so we can trace that. And then we can also find our, our inferior angle. Now we can. We can do some different things to kind of accentuate these. We can have the individual slightly retract with our hand here. That would show kind of where that medial border is, as well as that inferior angle. We can find the lateral border as well of the scapula, but that gives us a good idea of where things are located on this posterior aspect. We'll have them uh, come back around to the anterior side now. Additionally, as we're looking, we want to be uh, identifying if there's any patterns of atrophy, muscle wasting, or anomalies as we look for symmetry left to right. And so part of your, your palpation is to be comparing the involved side to the uninvolved side and vice versa. Normal is your patient. There are wide-ranging variabilities between clients and patients, so uh, take that into consideration and always be doing a side-to-side -side comparison. Now with your palpation, one of the things that's crucial is that you identify the rotator cuff tendons. And there's a few ways to do this. Um, however, we're gonna give you kind of four baseline ways to palpate with a good degree of accuracy for those rotator cuff tendons. So the first one we're gonna start with is arguably the most implicated of the rotator cuff tendons, and that is the supraspinatus. With the supraspinatus, we want to adopt a position of slight shoulder extension, adduction, and internal rotation. And the best way to do this is to actually bring the arm behind the back, similar to what we would call the liftoff test. This puts us in about 10 to 15 degrees of glenohumeral extension. There's adduction if we push a little bit over, and they're already in an internally rotated position. Now, from here, we're gonna find the supraspinatus tendon just inferior to the acromion and near kind of vertical and lateral to our bicipital groove, which is why you needed to identify that early on so you know where to palpate. So we're not straight in the anterior portion of the shoulder, we're slightly lateral, and we can commence our palpation here as we palpate the supraspinatus as it dives uh, inferior through the subacromial space. The next tendon that we're going to palpate is our uh, subscapularis, since we're in a seated position. And the subscapularis is found uh, slightly through an uncomfortable form of palpation. Uh, the individual is in 
pretty much a neutral position, not only with regards to flexion and abduction, but also with regards to internal and external rotation. And so for subscapularis, where we're going to find that is actually in the deltopectoral triangle. And again, this is slightly uncomfortable when performing this palpation. Luckily, though, uh, it's not altogether necessary as very few individuals actually have compromisation of the subscapularis. If somebody was unable to perform a lift-off test, that may uh, be where you begin to go and palpate that tendon. But we're going to need to come through this anterior lateral space here, the deltal pectoral triangle, and palpate deep. And the tendon should feel uh, more rope and taut-like than the actual muscle. If you want to confirm that you're on it, you can also have the individual come into internal rotation and then resist, and you'll feel that tendon kind of pop out. And as you can see, our patient is wincing a little bit because as we palpate that and provide resistance, it's not altogether comfortable. So we've looked at supraspinatus and subscapularis. The two that we're missing can actually be palpated in the exact same position, and that is our infraspinatus and teres minor. For this, though, we need our patient to switch positions. And for this, we're going to have him come into a prone position and kind of a prone on elbows with the elbows touching. So let's let him get into that position. So we're going to bring the elbows together. What this does is it gets us into the position. We need about 60 to 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. We also need shoulder adduction to kind of pull those tendons uh, a little bit into a top position. And so once we're here, consider where we find these. The infraspinatus is the big broad muscle uh, here on kind of the more superior portion of the infraspinatus fossa. Teres minor and major are just below that. And so where we're going to find the tendons then is kind of on this posterior lateral portion uh, right off of the acromion. So we can find the acromion, we can drop down, and then we can palpate the tendon of infraspinatus and just inferior to that teres minor. From here as well, we can get an appreciation of just the overall posterior aspect if you were still uh, trying to identify that medial uh, scapular border, sometimes you can find it a little easier in this prone on elbows position, uh, as well as spine of the scapula. So there's a few other things you can palpate in a prone position as well. So hopefully that gives you a nice overview of going through your palpatory exam for the glenohumeral joint. Again, use observation along with your palpation skills. Look for symmetry. Compare side to side, that's your reference frame, and then ensure that you're palpating the individual rotator cuff tendons as well, given these specific positions to increase accuracy and improve your copal reasoning throughout your musculoskeletal exam. Have a go with the peer colleague and let me know if there's any questions.